is where the Earth Charter can be very helpful, and I think kind of in a very foundational way, fundamental way, to the to the ongoing progress of the climate change treaty negotiations. First, as a declaration of our of our shared values and universal responsibilities, the Earth Charter gives us a very rich and broad definition of the community for whom we're morally responsible for the consequences of our actions. And the Earth Charter uses this term, the greater community of life. It includes all the people in our, in the nation that we're from. It includes people in other nations. It includes other species with whom we share Earth as home. And it certainly includes future generations. So if we were to frame our climate change treaty negotiations by a principle of universal responsibility of a greater community of life, I think we would get different kinds of decisions being made. Secondly, the Earth Charter contains a large number of ethical principles. Now, what's an ethical principle? Well, an ethical principle is it's written in the form of a moral imperative. It doesn't tell us what to do, but it tells us what we need to be thinking about doing when we're making decisions. So when we're deciding about what's the right or wrong thing to do regarding our ethical responsibilities, the Earth Charter principles can help guide us in those decisions. So when we come to, uh, when the international community comes to negotiating what, what are called policies and measures for mitigation, i.e. what actions are going to be taken to, to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and also policies and measures for adaptation, how are we going to help people, especially poor people in developing countries adapt, cope with the unavoidable uh, impacts of, of climate change. Uh, when we consider the policies and measures that, that are going to be brought about, we can use the Earth Charter principles to uh, guide those policies and measures and evaluate them and make sure they're going to uh, do what they say they're going to do and avoid what we call perverse outcomes. Now, what do I mean by perverse outcomes? Well, in reducing emissions of greenhouse gases, we don't want to cause other problems to be worse or cause new problems to happen. We don't, we don't want to accelerate the loss of biodiversity. We don't want to accelerate uh, poverty. We don't want to have more poverty. We want to reduce emissions of greenhouse gases in a way that does not make these other problems worse. Actually, if we're intelligent about it, we can come up with policies and measures for mitigation that will have co-benefits, as well as reducing greenhouse gas emissions, they will help protect biodiversity, as well as reducing emissions of greenhouse gases, they will help alleviate poverty. The same applies to adaptation. In trying to help people adapt to the, to the impacts of unavoidable climate change, we want to make sure we don't create other problems. In addition, as we start to implement act measures, for both mitigation and adaptation. We need to evaluate, assess what we're doing and make sure we're achieving the code benefits, avoiding perverse outcomes and actually solving the problem. And again, the Earth Charter principles can be used to help in this kind of ongoing assessment.